Hi, everyone. Leslie M. Thornton, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss. Doing something a little different today. Normally, I only air podcast episodes that come out in the future on the official page of members of the Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss program and our mastermind program. But today, I felt compelled to share this message here. And if you're listening to this live, you're listening to on the replay, or you're listening to the podcast, listen up. Leslie's about to get on her soapbox and start to spit some reality. And the reality I want to spit today is around the fact that we don't have time. As human beings, we don't have time for you to stay stuck with your never ending battle, saga, story with weight loss. You don't have time to continue battling with your never ending story and saga with weight loss. And what I mean by that is all the science that we know about how the mind works, right? We think about three things as human beings on a day-to-day basis. We think about time. I have to be here at this time. I have to be at their time. I'm going to be late. We think about the environment. It's hot in here. It's cold in here. And the third thing that human beings' minds think about when they are not focused on something is the body. So I feel fat today. I feel thin today. I feel bloated today, right? It's just the mind is constantly evaluating and analyzing and trying to figure out and trying to manage and control every one of those only three things that are here. It's extremely unexciting. And I'm here to tell you, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up and realize that those thoughts that go through your head every day, right? The thoughts of when you put on your pants this morning and immediately they felt tight or they felt loose, which completely set you off into the way that your day felt today, right? If you woke up this morning and last night you didn't eat too much and you stayed really good on your diet plan and everything that you say that you want to do, your pants felt a little bit looser. You started out having a great day. And then for most of you, because you're now having that belief of, well, I'm skinnier today, you're going to go and you're going to eat something that's going to create more bloat today. And then tomorrow you're going to wake up, or if you woke up this way this morning and your pants are going to feel a little bit tight. And now your brain's going all crazy. You're saying, okay, today's the day, or, oh my gosh, I'm a failure. I hate this. I can't ever lose weight. What's wrong with me? Now you're researching the next thing. You're promising yourself that today you're going to be perfect. And the next day you're going to be perfect. And the next day you're going to be perfect only to fail yourself again. It is absolute madness, and it does not have to be this way. So when you get that, number one, you are not those thoughts that are happening 24-7 in your brain about food, body, and weight. They're just what's there based on your past. Maybe your mom was obsessed with her weight or the way that she looked, or your grandma, or you watched a lot of TV, or you were a model in the past, or you always like were reading tabloid magazines or something that showed that skinny is better. That's the reason why you have all those judgments and opinions and assessments around good, bad, right, wrong, need to fix, change, manipulate. And it's maddening. And it's not who you are at all. So I want you to take a second. And imagine that the mental madness and chaos around food, body, and weight was not there anymore. I know some of you might be saying, I can't even imagine that, Leslie. I have been dealing with this my entire life since I was eight, since I was in middle school, since I had my kids, since menopause, since I had that health instance happen to me in the past. I've never been able to get it back. And because of that, there's no way out of this. I am broken. I am an addict. It's in my genes. It's my menopause. It's hereditary. 
It's just this plague that I was given. And I know that story because it was mine. I had all the things. Oh, addiction runs in the family. Uh, having, you know, gaining weight is bad and losing weight is good was definitely part of my family's entire, my upbringing around that. I also have the science background and I'm totally aware of how, you know, hormones and different things that happen in your body, your thyroid can affect your weight. I know it. I 100% know it. And I also know that knowing it made absolutely no difference for me at all when it came to having any freedom, any inner peace, any joy at all in my day-to-day -day life, unless I was skinny. Oh, I knew that when I was skinny, I was happy. I was free. I was confident. I was content. I remember standing in front of my mirror after doing Weight Watchers when I was 14 for months and lost, I don't know, 10 pounds, but it made a big difference on a 14-year-old's body. And I just was wearing a bathing suit and I said, mom, never let me gain this weight back again. I've never been so happy in my life. And I'm here to say that high in happiness is real when you lose weight. It is real. But I was just telling my hypnosis program clients last week around the other fact that you're happy when your weight is down. And the other 75% of the time, you're depressed, you're miserable, you're unhappy, you're mad at yourself, you're missing your entire life. And I really want you to ask yourself, what kind of life is that? What kind of life is it where a small percentage of the time that you actually hit your goal weight because you just killed yourself for the last however many months to lose the weight? Being happy in that time. And then the other major fraction of the time, because you're a human being and stress happens and things out of your control happen and parties happen and family happens and pregnancies happen and menopause happens and grief happens and loss happens. And so your weight shifts. Those are the things you can't control. And meanwhile, instead of actually being with all that is and accepting the fact that, hey, sometimes life is freaking hard. Sometimes life throws curveballs and I can't control it. And therefore, sometimes I stress eat because I'm a human being. At least I'm not doing, you know, crack or cocaine or something to deal with this. Yes, food is my go to choice. Well, guess what? It is for most human beings. But what makes it different for you? What makes it different for you is that your mind is 100% occupied with, in order for me to be happy, I have to lose weight. What kind of life is that? What if you could be happy no matter what weight that you were? What if you could appreciate whatever phase or part of your life and your path that you're on right now? I know for myself, when I was working on relationship stuff, right? I was in some relationships, they were long-term and they weren't satisfying. And I had one of them that was the breakup and it was like, I can't do this anymore. And it brought up all these emotions. I'm a failure, da, 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 all this kind of stuff. And it forced me to have to evolve as a human being to understand what I didn't know around my own way of being, my own behaviors, my own habits that had me become. And so my weight gain that happened when that happened was not a sign of failure. It was a sign of my transformation. But in order for me to get present to the fact that there is no accident, there is no bad thing happening. It's all happening for you. 
I had to get past all of my fears of gaining weight, of people not liking me anymore if I had weight gain, of feeling like I was a food addict. I was tying 100% my worth as a human being to how much I weighed. Leslie, you're successful at life if you have a small body and a large bank account. Right, I mentioned before about Brooke, who's a part of our program. She's a money mindset coach and how the, the skinny and rich, right? Our society is mad about being skinny and rich. And then we become skinny and we're the poorest person ever because we've just had to sacrifice all our relationships, our day-to-day -day life, right? And I'm not talking about when you're somebody who, like there's times in my life where I've also just lost weight or felt really inspired naturally to just like take care of myself in a different way or I had spaciousness or my schedule just happened where I didn't have to start till 11 o'clock when I was in college. So I got a lot of sleep and I was working at the gym late at night just by chance. And so I'd be doing movement at night. So I lost weight, but just happened because of circumstances. It didn't happen because of me trying to kill myself to get a result. I'm not talking about when it feels easeful and when it feels natural and like, oh, I could go either way. Like if my weight's fine, you're here because it's not that. You're here because weight is a huge trigger for you. Food is a huge trigger for you. You binge, you may even purge or you have in the past. The conversations that you're always having with your closest friends are about your weight and the next diet that you're doing. I have a client right now. And she was talking about how she would be bringing her family on this roller coaster ride her whole life based on what diet that she was on, what food was now dubbed the right and wrong or good and bad food that she could eat that didn't cause cancer. It's an obsession. When I first learned the term orthorexia and realized that there is actually an obsession, there's actually a, a known diagnosis for when people get mentally obsessed about eating only the right foods and only the right amounts or else cancer is going to happen. And I read it all. I was that. I'm a nurse. I became a nurse because of my interest in my own body and my own paranoia about weight gain and my own obsession with needing to be in control of my weight in order to be happy. It was no way to live. And I'm telling you that right now, you can't see it now, but behind that, when you go back to that place where you can imagine yourself not thinking about those food, body, and weight thoughts, that putting on your pants didn't trigger you, that stepping on the scale didn't trigger you, that putting a bathing suit on didn't trigger you, that going to, into a dressing room doesn't trigger you anymore, like at all, and I really mean at all, I did not think that was possible. It wasn't until I was able to relax the mind through hypnosis and actually learn the science behind how we can actually change the way that we think and the way that we experience our lives day to day. When I got that, my whole life opened up. There was a space, there was a clearing, there was a relaxation, there was an ability to sit back for the first time in my life and relax. My mind was moving a million miles per hour every single day. I was successful. I was doing my job. I was, everything was fine on the surface. I was obsessed and I got to the end of my rope with dieting and exercise. And I said, I'm either going to be fat and happy forever. I'm going to figure this thing out for good. And I kept going on my path until I found hypnosis. I was the biggest skeptic of that. Why wouldn't they teach me that in nursing school? I still don't understand why they don't teach that. <laughs> Game changer. I had patients who started looking at hypnosis because I mentioned it to them when I was in the hospital down tens, you know, I think it was like 30, 40 pounds or something in three months. It was a very obese guy off these blood pressure medications. He had just the same as you do, every intention in the world of actually losing weight, of actually not having crazy behaviors around food, body, and weight, of 
actually putting down the food. He really, really, really wanted that. And no matter what he did, he always failed. Why? Because it wasn't a problem with willpower. It wasn't a problem of structure or behaviors or habits or patterns. It was in the mind. It was not harnessing and harvesting the 95%, the most powerful vehicle that you have in your entire existence as a human being. And after you get that, you get to experience that space. And let me tell you something, that space can feel scary at first. We have a comfort blanket as human beings, especially ones that are obsessed about food, body, and weight. And the comfort is the fact that we're obsessed about food, body, and weight. It's like our identity is talking about that. Our identity is always pushing and striving and trying to manage and control. It's like you need to have something to focus on, right? When I was a little girl and I first was taught about portion sizes and calories, I took it on as my little quest. Hannah, who is also on our team, right? She was the class president in her class. She's a go-getter. Without a project, when someone is as smart as she or myself and you, you go crazy and we're scared of letting go of that attachment. Oh my God, if I'm not always obsessing about food, I might actually go off the handle. I might binge for days. I may never stop. I'm going to end up on my 600 pound life. So I want to acknowledge that that fear is there, the fear of letting go of that very familiar struggle is real. It's a primal thing. It's what relates us to our friends and our family to always be struggling on that. But my friend, it's not, it doesn't have to be there. It's a small thing and it causes you to have to continue to live a very, very, very small life. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of stuff going on in our planet right now. A lot of stuff. And the longer that you stay choosing this comfort blanket of weight loss, this comfort blanket of having this struggle, the longer you are preventing yourself from actually being someone who can make a profound difference on this planet while we still have time left. Your kids are watching you and they're going to get mentally obsessed with food. And they won't be able to live up to their potential because they're locked in too. It starts within you. If you're a leader at your workplace, you're not able to really think in this beautiful way and be present with your employees or your team because you're locked in your own mind, terrified about the fact that you ate two cookies after lunch and you said that you weren't. You won't binge. You won't have to sneaky anymore. You won't be hiding wrappers after the drive through anymore. You'll be able to just go to wherever restaurant people are going to and indulge in any way that quote unquote normal people get to and not have a panic attack after started next diet the next day. You'll be able to plan vacations and you don't start this binge thing for the next six weeks or eight weeks until you go so that you can wear your bathing suit and you end up not really enjoying the time anyway because you're still paranoid about the way that you look. It's maddening. You need to get out of that space. The only one that can do it is you. You can do it. This is what we're here for. This is what we do. It is possible, but you got to take that action. We don't have time to waste. We don't have time to waste in this anymore. People are done with food prison in a week after joining this program. After decades, you know how long you've been dealing with food, body, and weight stuff. One week, not obsessing about food and weight anymore. One week. What are you waiting for? So do yourself 
love yourself. I know you're a caregiver. You think about everybody else, do it for you. Find the space, make the space, make the time. It's one phone call with us to change the entire trajectory of your entire life, whether it's with us or not. One call, one action, one step in that direction changes the entire course of your life. But if you're constantly sitting back, just listening, not making any moves, no movement, you got to meet the universe halfway. I love you guys and I'll see you next time.